Well, well, well. I'm gonna have a, a little discussion because as um, some of you know, I've been trying various different supermarket beers. And if there's one big controversy at the moment, it's about Cloudwater, which is a brewery that I've got quite a fondness for. And this glass from Alan at the Bar Stewards. Check them out. Um, Cloudwater are renowned as being one of the pucker breweries, like really you know, quality breweries. And they're in sort of craft pubs and whatever. And bottle shops, craft beer shops. They've been known in the past, to, or the owner has been known to criticise the likes of Tesco's, which I think was partly why when they introduced this range to go into Tesco's, there was something of an outcry. I think it's fair to say. Now, I don't really have too much of a, a view on this. I'm not a fan of places like Tesco's. The reason I'm not a fan of places like Tesco's is generally they tend to screw over their suppliers. And my guess is that um, the predominant fear here is that by selling through Tesco's it will undermine the sales that they make through bottle shops, usually small independent bottle shops. And I think that's a valid point. And the reason for that is, I'm not sure, one of these was 350, one of these was three quid. Very rarely you'll get any beer like that in a bottle shop for three quid, or for even 350. But here's the other thing. This is a specially produced pack of four beers. Now this is a tenner for four 440 milliliter cans. That's £2.50 a can. There's no bottle shop on the planet that can really compete with that. But here's the thing. These are collaborations with four smaller breweries who probably generally would never get a chance, an opportunity to get their stuff to a broader market. So, and you know, I've covered queer brewing before. I like their stuff. Um, they're LGBTQ plus owned and run. And um, the bottles that I've had before have been bloody pucker. Here, we have, um, again, from a smaller brewery, um, and so it's, it's kind of like African-focused, African-inspired. I'll just run down so that you can have a, a little read of their ting. Then we have, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to kind of like let you read through here. This is the alcohol free, completely. Well, I think it's probably very, very low, but. So the thing is that I suppose a good trade off, regardless of how much these people get, these collaborations, the way these collaborations work is that they're not, they're not really collaborations in, in the true sense of the word. Um, they are brewery, two breweries talking to each other. In this case, Cloudwater and these other, I'm going to start with this one, and these other breweries. And then they contract brew them out 
it's contract brewed by I think Brewdog. So cloud water haven't taken up their current capacity, they haven't broken their cold chain, etc. And because it's brewed by Brewdog, Brewdog will be taking the chunk, the large chunk. Cloud Auto will be getting a bit, and then these other breweries will be getting a bit as well. Is it a good idea? I don't know. You see, the argument is, and it has some validity, that introduce people to craft beer in somewhere like Tesco's, they might go and seek them out elsewhere. I don't know how that actually does follow through in reality, whether it does mean that, as an example here in Sheffield, somebody would buy these or those and then end up going to Craft and Berry or Turner's or, you know, it, I don't know. I don't know really whether there is a, um, a linear uh, progression. I'd like to hope that there is. I'd like to think there is. I'd like to think, I mean, I did this the other way around. I, I started off, um, I wanted to experiment. So I was looking through some reviews. I saw Queer Brewing. So then I went and bought some of their bottles from, I'm fairly sure it's Craft and Berry. Might have been Turner's, I don't know. Um, but putting money into local bottle shops, they were bloody good beers as well. So it's nice. It is, it is good to see Queer Brewing kind of like mainstream. I just, but is it a gimmick? Oh God, please. I hope not. Um, is it? Is it going to be a bit of a fad that Tesco's will then shit on them? I hope not. And the thing is that I like the idea of giving people more choice. I think for for. I'm going to try and line these up for a decent photo. For people to say this is selling out, I mean, that's a very strong reaction to what Cloudwater have done. And I'm kind of like ambivalent about whether or not. Sorry. It's a fucking mess. Sorry. It's a right fucking mess. De-mess the place. Right. Yeah, that can be for the shot. Um, I'm going to go through these. There's only six. Uh, take me a few days. Um, I'm going to tell you what I think. And at the end of it, I'm going to have a little ponder on the whys and wherefores and the potential gains and losses from going into somewhere like Tesco. Anyway, I'm going to start with Good Karma's 0.5 ABV. It looks a little thin. I don't know whether that's just because oh, it doesn't look too bad. You get some decent light behind it. Now, what do they say? One of the things I noticed that um, that he says on here, he says, uh, let's pick it out. He says, um, your mindful journey needs to be about one thing. You, your body, and what goes into it. That's three things. Anyway, I'm sorry, but it is. You is one thing. Your body is another thing. What you put in it is another thing altogether. I mean, you can collectively put all... Shut up. Let's taste it, see what we think. There's absolutely no head on there. There's a little bit of something on there. But it's not head. It smells fresh enough. It doesn't give you a massive hit of hops or anything like that on the nose. Let's see what it tastes like, shall we? Well, interesting. 
that zingy, zesty, fresh. It's more citronella than citra. It's an interesting one. I don't dislike it. Um, it's one of those nice ones for a summer day. It is quite light. There's no real body to it. It's still got a, quite a nice tart, zesty aftertaste. That's not at all unpleasant. For £2.50, I think that's, that's okay. It doesn't match some of the other um, low or no alcohol beers that I've tried, but it's different in such a way as, yes, I like it. That's all right. Fair cop. So this isn't from the promo box, this is a part of their new sort of range which they are sticking in to Tesco and I think this is, you know, I think the, the box of four, people will forgive that because it's giving exposure to some breweries that probably wouldn't get exposure. This I suppose is trying to introduce people to cloud water, but this is where now I think people were getting the ump a little bit I don't know I'm, I'm not sure what I what I think about it yet but 3.7 I mean this is a nice sort of, I suppose you call it table beer um, soft and hazy pale ale <sighs> right whack it in the glass it looks all right and it's got a very very nice head the only criticism is unless you really look you can't really tell because the yellow on silver what it is you're drinking but let's give it a sniff hmm. All right, well it's not massively powerful on the nose it's a bit fruity yeah I mean it's alright let's have a taste interesting it's fresh it's not got a bad mouthfeel considering 3.7 percent I think it's ever so slightly astringent in a sort of a slightly astringenty soury bittery it's it's okay um and it doesn't really give anything away does it it's not really telling you anything there um I don't know, is the answer. There are other table beers of that strength, which I prefer. Beak and Attic are my two go-tos. I'm not sure what this is trying to be. Um, For me, I mean, it's nice enough, but it is quite astringent. Um, but at three quid, it's all right. Would I buy it again? Not sure. Cloudwater in Tesco's. 
can number two. This is not one of the four pack uh, special um, exposure. I don't know if they call it that or not. This is a 6% soft and juicy IPA. And um, you know, just the same, doesn't really give anything away. Um, anyway, let's see what it's like. This is 350 and there's no way any bottle shop could ever really compete with that. What's it like? Can't fault the colour and can't fault the aroma. The aroma is very, very juicy and sort of nice. Mm. It's fresh, citrusy, kind of juicy. Mm. Right, taste. Yeah, that's nice. That's definitely cloud water. Um, it's it's a quality beer. It's lovely. Now the question is, that being lovely at three pound fifty, when there's equally lovely, I wouldn't necessarily say better. Sadly. Um, that's that's good cloud water. That's a good cloud water core beer. But in a bottle shop, you'd be looking a quid more at least, maybe one fifty more. So the question remains: Would someone buying this and enjoying it decide to try more cloud water stuff from a bottle shop and then be put off by the price? I don't know. I read, I've, I'm not sure where I'm at with this. I've read so many different sort of theories, pro and negative. Um, that's a lovely beer. That's a nice beer for 350. It ain't gonna last right long either, but yes. difficult one. Bear in mind I'm not an expert when it comes to tasting beer. I'm the first person to admit I'm not an expert. No Cicerone, no BJCP. I understand some of the some of the stuff around tasting beer but I'm a consumer not a connoisseur and for me that's good value. Now this is a brewery that I've heard of before, fairly sound in a number of senses and I've got to say it's my favourite can, god it's purple, uh, it's a mosaic hop forward and I'm just going to give you if I can a little blast of the words on here. Not sure how well that will come out. But there you go. Anti intolerance. And a cool looking geezer. Right. You're welcome to come and sample some of my own brew any day, pal. Right. Anyway, like I said, mosaic hot forward, rock leopard, and this. There's another 6% ABV. Beautiful can. Love the can. Sod the can. Get it in the glass. I do apologise if there's flickery light. Um, keep me in the, try and sort that. First thing. I have poured the whole can. No room. What a superb head. What a superb colour. And... The sort of like the, the smash in her face of that mosaic is bonkersly, beautifully brilliant. Let's just turn that can around. 
pop it there let's put it there nicely in shot as I give it a sniff and a taster oh can't fault the aroma in the slightest it is just like bonkersly mosaic beautiful love it let's give it a and the head's sticking around beautiful color beautiful head beautiful aroma let's give it some on a gob That's a lovely beer. It's slightly more muted than I was expecting. It's not really fruity and effervescent. It's nice, it's, it's smooth. It's almost, um, it's almost herbal. Not herbal as in ganja herbal as in it's got a, a sort of like a kitcheny taste to it reasonably dry but full of flavor beautiful mouthfeel very good here's the kicker in that box of four beers all right, granted one of them's an alcohol free one. But this works out at two pound fifty. Which I think two pound fifty for a can of this fucking hell yes. That is a very lovely beer. And whatever your name is, I know I did see it on it. Oh crikey. I fucking read it somewhere. It's not there, is it? Whatever your name is, mate. Fucking rock on. Oh god, I haven't got me right I haven't got me right eyes in. It's not it's not there. They haven't they haven't even haven't even put his fucking name on there. Bastards. It's in Tesco's, it's in their box, four for a tenner. Which makes that bargain of the box as far as I'm concerned so far. By the way, this is I'm building a new keyser for the home brewery. In case you're wondering it'll be on the youtube channel sort of like somewhere up there or down there or coming soon or it, it might it's probably probably been and gone right next these were missing in the last raid on tesco's so these uh this makes the four so there's four cloud water ones and then the four collaboration type ones so i thought i would give a nudge to this 4.5 percent soft and juicy cloud water session ipa um, again doesn't really give much away session ipa blend of modern and classic hops yeah okay that's fair enough but um yeah let's see let's get it stuck in a glass and see what we think oh hang on let's find out how much it was um don't know i haven't got the receipt it's either three quid or something something like that charlotte grabbed it while she was while she was out right in a glass you'd find it hard to fault the head on that It's got a very fruity nose. Ever so slightly. A bit floral, a bit tobacco. Cool, get me. Remember, I am not an expert. I, I am not a, uh, a connoisseur. I'm a consumer. But, colour wise, fucking bang on. Right. Cloud water at Tesco's, 
number three or four of their own. For a 4.5% session New England style IPA. That's fucking cock on. <sighs> it's good. Um... Got a lovely bitterness, very nice, dry, and bitter aftertaste. Keeps the fruitiness in there. Tiny, tiny bit astringent, but that ain't bad. And of course the worry then is going to be, well, they're really going to have to up their game if they're going to be selling five quid cans in bottle shops. But that's a good brew. That is a good brew. Can't take it away from them. And, I, and I'm, interestingly, um, and this isn't, this doesn't show up, it says Cloudwater is, is um, driven by innovation, beer presents, blah, blah, blah. And then underneath they go our work no longer centered just on beer we create celebrate fund and facilitate change both within craft beer and throughout connected industries throughout our wayfinder program our better futures fund through our not-for-profit car water and friends collaboration ipa pack uh, and through wider work to inspire future generations of creators and innovators uh, for more beer and info head to cloudwater.co .co. Mm. and um, it's a bit like Brewdog have, have been sort of like hammering this thing on there where they say the world's first carbon negative brewery and I, I don't know all right it's interesting it's, it's a great it's a great concept this um you know we're brewers but brewers with with some kind of social conscience is it virtue signaling is it marketing is there any substance behind it and a lot of people on on some of the craft beer discussion groups including the ones on facebook which basically is a fucking cesspit um are saying oh they sold out or you know last year they were saying how bad tesco are this year they're in tesco i don't know I used to think, when I set my business up and, and everyone says, oh, are you going to turn into a capitalist? I don't necessarily think it's as simple as that. Um, you know, I, I, I took contracts from, from government agencies and whatever, and people were saying, oh, blimey, you know, you got into bed with the government and it's all dirty money. And I thought, well, fucking hell. The idea of dirty money went out of the window 500 years ago when the Catholic Church got involved with banking. So uh, I don't know. I don't know where I feel about this cloud water in Tesco's thing. I think on the whole, I think it's nice to be I would just pop into Tesco's and buy a can of decent beer for three quid. But, yeah, I know. I know. How is it going to, uh, how is it going to have a knock-on effect for bottle shops? I don't know. Be interesting to see. I don't think bottle shops will suffer because I think people who patronise bottle shops will do so anyway. They'll do so because they like going to a bottle shop. The smell is incredible. <laughs> I suppose you'd expect that for a double dry hopped <coughs> pail. Right. Here's the thing, right? It's the sort of thing I'd buy in a bottle shop. I 
I like the idea that I can buy it in Tesco's. And that's, I don't know. It's kind of, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because I think this was 350. Would I pay 450 something for it in a bottle shop? I don't know. I'm wondering. This is their fourth um, own one, apart from the collabs in the bottle shops. I'm wondering if this whole bottle shop thing is a bit of a red herring. I'd like to think people will discover cloud water and a range of other beers like, you know, like Life and Death is, is a good example. Vocations, Life and Death. Um, discover that in a supermarket and then get a taste for, for some craft beers. I already liked Vocation Brewery. In fact, we accidentally stopped an extra day in Hebden Bridge when we were sailing through. Um, partly because of the floods, but also because we was only two minutes from their bar. But anyway, um, <sighs> it smells lovely. It's got a beautiful colour. What's it taste like? Stop whittling on. As you'd expect. Quite strong. Tasting, sorry. Um, it's actually a little bit astringent. I'm not getting that smash you in the face with the hops. It's nice enough. I think the session one was possibly a bit nicer and 50p cheaper. This is Yorkshire, you gotta keep an eye on those sort of things. Now, it's nice, it's got a very dry finish. It's not as fruity as I was expecting. It's also, there's a slight acidity to it as well. But it's all right. As far as it goes, that is, that's a nice beer for 350. And this is where I think it starts to get confusing. It is what it is worth. That is a good three pound, three pound fifty can of beer. It's not as good as Northern Monk's Transient, which was also three pound fifty. It's nowhere near as good as Transient, but it is worth. £3.50. I, I still think Transients, uh, uh, Northern Monk's Transient was considerably underpriced, which is why I bought quite a lot of it. But that's not a bad beer. Um, can't fault it at all. Um, it's a, it's a 3.5, 3.75 on untapped. It's okay. Still, it's got a slightly uh, slightly acidic aftertaste but it's okay last two from the collaboration box and this one should be quite interesting it um london based african inspired want to share heritage and invite you to embrace African culinary experiences through our passion for beer. It might be a bit gimmicky, but it's kind of sweet too. Aim to inspire people from minority groups. Yeah, well, that's that's probably kind of the whole point of what you know food and beer should do. It should unite. Um, so, Echo Brewery, Tesco's, 
four in the box for a tenner. Let's see. Immediately on the nose, Simcoe. It's one of those hops that I overused a little bit last year and got, I don't know, just a bit too um, carried away with it. So I haven't brewed with it this year. And just getting that aroma there has reminded me that perhaps I really should start bunging it in a few. Very, almost spicy on the nose. Quite gentle, sort of like a few melony and tropical hints. I'm not. I'm not going to say any more because I'm not an expert. You know, my nose isn't really, isn't really um, that trained. But look, it's retained a nice little bit of head, and what a beautiful colour! I mean, that's got me salivating already. Love a little head. Let's go. Oh, yes. That's stuffed full of fruit. It's got a beautiful mouthfeel. Really smooth. Tiny, tiny hint, but hardly at all, of bitterness. It's bloody lovely. Oh yes, I think um, that's one that I would buy off the shelf on its own without any doubts whatsoever. It's nice, it's just, it's a bit, yeah. Can't fool that in the slightest. Mm. Yep, that gets a that gets a thumbs up from me. Banging job. Last one. Wow. Um now I've had beers from this brewery before. I like their beers. I like the fact that they're they're sort of LGBTQ plus whatever. Um yeah. Let's get it poured. Immediately smashed in the face with citra. I could be stood over the other side of the workshop and still smell it. Look at that colour. Just look at that. Beautiful. Look at the head. Honestly, the aroma. Seriously, guys. That is such. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the um, do the thing again. Um, All right, I like the idea that they're making something out of being, being queer. Fuck it, yeah. Why not? Um, and this is the thing. <sighs> right, look. Camera, the campaign for Real Al, really missed out. They forgot to tell their members that the war is over. <laughs> And craft one. Right, if you want to stick with your fucking cap and whatever and walking stick, fine. And demand that something comes out of a cask on a hand pump and it's warm and flat, fine. That's great. I haven't got a problem with that. But all of those pubs that are frequented with people like that are usually not the sort of pubs that anyone who's either black or lesbian or gay or trans or sometimes you know asian i know a lot of asian guys who aren't muslim like a pint 
If you haven't ever experienced walking into an environment where you are immediately the focus, you should have tried being me back in the mid 80s when I first came to Sheffield, going into a miners community with a southern accent. Or walking into a black pub where everybody in there was Rasta playing dominoes and just walking up to the bar and asking for a pint of Guinness and not realising that it had all gone completely silent. <clears throat> and that's me with my straight white male privileges, it's called. So, yeah, I think beer should unite, not divide. And that's why I kind of like the idea that <coughs> this box set, uh, as it were, if you can call it a box set, I don't call it a box set. I think, I think four marks to it. Um, and in a sense, you know, that would be regardless of what the beer's like. You know, sort of like top marks purely for having a go. But this smells beautiful and I can't wait to get some of it inside me. So, here we are. And that is fucking sublime. Um, oh. And I think I definitely made the right choice to save the, the two these two for last. Both of those fantastic. This is kind of like this is everything that I want from a really good quality beer. This has got that nice smoothness, that nice chewy mouthfeel. It's got full of body. It's a nice 6%. It's got good head retention. It's got a lovely colour, but moreover than that, the flavour is truly outstanding. The aroma is enticing. Everything about this is a quality beer. And to find this in Tesco's, is really, and I don't care, all right, people go, eh, cow dogs are sold out there in Tesco's. Do you know what? Fuck off. <sighs> Just, I get constantly irritated by pretentious wankers who think all craft beer should come from a bottle shop or a, a you know a, a tap room these are quality beers even the, the no alcohol that was interesting it wasn't as good as i was hoping by any stretch of the imagination it wasn't there's far far better ones available for next to nothing and um and cloud waters themselves it's this not bad beer but for me these last two they are truly outstanding i would like to think that people will try some of these in bottle shops, uh, in supermarkets, go and seek other ones out in bottle shops. I'd like to think that. I don't know really whether that's going to happen. And the reality is, look, <sighs> there is a theory, and it's probably quite well grounded, that in probably 10 years' time, everything will be owned by about four major corporations. That's just the way it is. That's the way capitalism works. If you don't like it, then don't fucking vote for it. <laughs> there you go. You see, I've got a, I've got a thumbs up, seal of approval already from Untapped. Um, look, it's just the way it is. Let's enjoy it while we can. Right, a bit like you know we used to with British Home Stores and um, uh, Woolworths. Okay, for people who grew up with Woolworths, it's no longer there. All right little local post offices no longer there probably the reason is that we don't fucking use them so if you want to keep bottle shops right go and use your bottle shops but you know look don't don't slag off cloud water for going into tesco's right it's a fucking commercial decision right if they don't someone else will right so get over yourself this is beautiful by the way queer brewing if um if we get this place turned into a, um, into a sort of um, a licensed club, which is looking quite likely, I would love to have some of your stuff on tap. And and Echo, definitely. I'd like to have some cloud water on there, but I doubt I'll be able to afford it. <laughs> Listen, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. <clears throat> Do remember that I'm not an expert. All right? That is the important thing. I am not a connoisseur, right? I'm a consumer. I do like a drink. 
um, but I like a quality drink. This is a quality drink. Queer Brewing, this is a quality drink. Echo, was that Echo? Yeah, Echo, quality, fantastic. Others, all right. Listen, I wouldn't turn it down, all right? I wouldn't kick you out of bed for a fucking can of Budweiser, all right? Cloud water, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's great. It's mat it easily matches up against all, any of the other stuff in a supermarket. So I think you know this is this was a good little experiment, and this all of this lot kind of like weighed in for somewhere around twenty quid or something. So it's all right With, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's a win, and if it introduces more people to craft beer, even better but you know what don't slag it off because it's in tesco's grow the fuck up all right that's the way the world is now anyway boys and girls like i said if you've enjoyed this nonsense uh, hang on i'm just gonna do i'm just gonna do a little line up hang on here we are look at that i think i'll put i'll probably put some of the text or something here but cloud water in tesco's i ain't got a problem with that not at all, not in the slightest. I think um, it's one of those inevitabilities. But, oh, my chair's gonna break. But it's okay. And yes, yes, definitely, these are okay. And these are supermarket beers. That's the way it is, boys and girls. Not displeased at all with these. And um, will I buy them again? I'd definitely get these again yes get those in tesco's on their own like i said anyway if you like this rubbish please subscribe to the channel a thumbs up would be lovely uh tell your friends send me your sister's phone number all that sort of stuff for now that's it whatever you're doing do it safely and uh cheers <laughs>